to stop here. Later I will tell you why. Hello everybody. Uh, I'm so happy to see you here watching my next video in my series about all Chopin's music. Today we have this nocturne. Nocturne in B major opus 32 number one. If you know this nocturne you probably are prepared for um, what will happen. If you don't know this nocturne you probably will be shocked. You will be even more shocked if you know other Chopin's nocturnes but you don't know this one or you are not so familiar with this one. Um, this nocturne was my very first nocturne that I learned at, in high school. Like, I mean, professionally learned, I would say, at school for my exam, etc. And now when I'm deeply um, analyzing this piece, I feel such a shame and even sadness that uh, nobody in high school told me anything about this. I mean, nobody told me this, what I'm going to tell you now. Nobody. So I only played the music on the surface. I made, you know, piano, forte, silent, more louder, faster, slower, legato, left hand, like a background. And that's all, that's all. But, you know, when I was, I was about 15 years old, this age is the age when our sensitivity grows and I would say explode. When we, uh, we love to, uh, we love to learn new things and discover, that's a good word. But we also need a guide, we need somebody to tell us. And unfortunately, I didn't have it. I didn't have any. I mean, I didn't have any who would go so deeply and who would show me that under the surface there is so much. So anyway, this is very personal, not so important in this analysis, so sorry for this, but these are my feelings. Um, today we have to be prepared for, I would say, a kind of shocking analysis and a shocking music. If you watch my other previous videos about nocturnes, you know what nocturnes are. Music for night, romantic, about love. And of course, we had Opus 9, Chopin in Love. Right? Um... Then we have Opus 15, when we, of course, we have drama, shocking drama in uh, this... Uh, when we have... But then we come back, and this is normal for us, A, B, A. So the, the middle part is uh, dramatic. Of course, we have the Shakespearean Nocturne, which is a little strange. Um, then we have Opus 27 when Chopin's love towards Maria Wojcicka exploded, when they got engaged, when we feel he is on the top of inspiration. And probably it was so hard for him to reach this peak of inspiration again. Many musicologists think so. They put down this Nocturnus, Opus 32, by saying they are worse. I wouldn't say so. Rather, I would say we just have a different Chopin. I always thought that mostly mazurkas are witnesses of Chopin's life because they were kind of his diary. But I changed my mind. Generally speaking, all his music is a witness of what was going on in his life. Maybe you, maybe you know it already, maybe you, you agree with me. But 
This nocturne, especially, is a witness of Chopin's life. More than we think. And we are bound to know exactly what happened in Chopin's life at that time when he was working on this opus. To understand it better, to understand the inner message that's inside this nocturno and to answer questions that arise after listening to this nocturno and that had always arrived uh, arised, uh, were always all the musicologists um, were sh shocked by the ending especially of this nocturno uh, well I spent a lot of time don't ask me how many hours I would say on analyzing this piece not really on learning because it's not that hard but on analyzing asking questions finding connections but I must tell you that with I mean only talking only about music it's not enough to answer all those questions because some things some motifs seems Im impossible to explain so we have to know what was going on in Chopin's life at the time, in my opinion, to understand why this nocturne is so complicated from the structural point of view and so s strange that it seems even that some crazy man composed this music. Okay, but since I talk too much, now I play for you the first phrase. If you know the nocturne, this nocturne, you know what will happen. If you don't know, my question is, will you feel a kind of shock in what you are going to hear just now? Part A, let's call, call it a part A. Um, a little complicated, don't you think so? It's not as easy to, 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 to really understand as the previous Nocturnus Opus 27, I think. What is the most shocking are those moments when the pianist, in this case me, suddenly gets very excited, even angry, plays suddenly plays faster, louder, and then stops. There is a silence. And then after the silence, we come back to the mood that we had in the beginning. Then there is some other melody. If you listened carefully, then you probably understood it. And then we come back to the first melody. And then again, we hear this excitement, anger, whatever you call it. Now, um, let me tell you, first of all, it's not my interpretation. This is written in the score. I mean, I'm talking now about this suddenly played louder and faster. Why I'm doing so? Because Chopin writes here forte, which means loud, and stretto, which means faster. I mean, not, not, not literally faster, but this is the meaning is to play it faster. I mean, as if we lose breath. That's the stretto meaning. 
Uh, then we have the silence and then we have the la delicatissimo. That's why we have so many contrasts in this uh, only one minute of music, I think. Okay, now very fast. What happened in Chopin's life during that time? As you know, when he composed Opus 27, he was engaged, he was dreaming about having family, he was sure he will have family, at least for a moment he was sure. He was in love. A very beautiful love. The moment when he composed this music, things started to uh, complicate more and more. The family of his fiance started to didn't to not, not approve him, his health condition, his profession. They they loved him as a man, but not as a husband for their daughter. So every day they probably we don't know exactly, but that's how it how it was. They were t telling her about what they think. You know, that time it was, of course, you need to have approval for parents before marriage. They were far away. And this relationship with her and her family get colder, colder and colder. We, of course, we only have letters, some of letters, many letters disappeared, but there is more than only letters in our lives. You know what I'm talking about. There are many things that we don't know. And I personally think that in this Nocturno, we have more information about what was really going on between them than in all the letters. Something started to complicate and uh, get worse and worse and worse. To make matters worse, Chopin met Georges Saint. So he was split. He started to be split. His feelings, his heart. There was his fiance. She was far away. There was Georges Saint who started to, you know, uh, trying to. She started to try to seduce him in a way, uh, adored him, and so on. And he was in a worse and worse condition, in fact. Soon we will have Chopin writing his second piano sonata. If you know what I'm talking about, you know that it's a heavy stuff. So now when we understand this feeling, let's try to be empathic. And with em empathy, we try to analyze this nocturne. I think it's worth it, because I hope that after this movie, you will never listen to this Nocturno like you used to listen. Everything starts like we expect, like we had... Uh, the B major key. The B major key is a key about love, which Chopin used many times. Right? Uh, opus 9, number 3. Here we have Dolce, sweet, sweet melody. We don't expect anything what will happen soon. <sighs> this is like a sudden cut. And you know, in my opinion, this music tells us something about the composer who composed it. He wanted it to be like this. So what does it mean? He, ha he has enough of writing sweet, romantic, candy-like music for aristocratic evenings. No, he doesn't want to do it anymore. But he still writes a nocturno. But he has no mood to write really a romantic music because his personal relationship, Roma's relationship, is going to collapse, is being destroyed. That's why this melody gets angry, extremely angry. That's why, well, you know, there are quite many pianists who are trying to play this smoothly. I mean, this, this forte and stretto. 
I'm a, I'm in another group. I'm a total against because I think this must be like this. If I were Chopin and I wrote in the score Forte Stretto here, I would really want somebody to play Forte and Stretto because if I didn't, then I wouldn't write it. I would write something else. Play smoothly, a little, play a little louder and a little faster. No, this is a sudden change. And we have to remember this because later you will see. This is a very important uh, ending. Now, mind you, this ends the, this first beautiful melody in B major. The melody, let's call it a love melody. After this silence, we have another very important thing, a delicatissimo, pianissimo, well, piano, we have the answer. I want you to, uh, to remember this. It's like a wave, up, down, but this wave is very important. This is a, a let's let's call it a person. This is some person in this nocturno. Every time when this person appears, lay after it there will be a change. Now this change is the second melody, and now this melody, what character this melody has? This is a kind of longing character, sadness, but I tell you even more. If we listen, if we analyze it harmonically, if we listen to these harmonies, we understand that the composer who wrote this was suffering inside. Why? Because we, and now, can you believe it? We have only diminished chords one after another. Listen slower. First diminished chord. Second diminished chord. Third diminished chord. Fourth diminished chord. Here, fifth diminished chord. And finally, release. Five diminished chords, one after another. Show me another piece of music which has it. Maybe Tchaikovsky, because he loved diminished chords, I don't know. Well, probably there, is, there are, but uh, I can't think about them right now. Anyway, suffering, inner suffering. But there is, let's call it a diminished chord melody. And now this diminished chord melody ends rather smoothly because it um, prepares us for the beginning of the piece. So, like nothing happened, again, let's try to play, to write a piece about love. of the person after which there will be something else. So the end of part A, we are in part B and now I play for you, focus and try to analyze yourself what you hear and then we do it together.
whole part B. Then it's repeated again. Again, full of inner message, I think, full of many motifs. Let's go closer, let's look closer at this. It starts with a melody which goes down. This is also a symbol because we don't have up, we have down. So something is collapsing. Again, down. And now here. Here is something very, very interesting. When I, after hours of analysis, I got to find this connection, which I'm going to share with you, I was shocked. Here we have, at first we have one melody, then the dialogue. Dialogue of two, of a couple. Listen to this melody, the dialogue melody. Now, if you remember my last analysis about Opus 27, number 2, there, there was a dialogue in, uh, in part A. Right? They were together. They were singing together. Happiness love being together this is a symbol in music here also we have the same and the melody is almost the same maybe chopin did it on purpose he took some a little part of this nocturno and changed it a little to make a symbol of it because what will happen next will destroy this couple Le just listen uh, again listen <laughs> A couple is together. Some clouds appears. Something bad happens. Something happened between us, between them quarrel something very strange and then we have the most important dialogue in this nocturno the most important when it appears we must realize that this is crucial this is this is what going to change the whole nocturno into a huge tragedy at the end let's just listen to this first person got extremely angry <laughs> like asking there is a question maybe I don't know you don't love me anymore or something even worse there is something but I don't really want to make this worse when I'm talking I don't want this nocturno to be cheap so that's why I don't want just you understand me uh, it's not I I think that this is that question but I want you to remember this moment as a very important moment in the nocturno that's why I'm making these connections. So let's see, let's just listen to the very dramatic dialogue. There is somebody, some motif, which gets extremely angry and powerful, and then we have the answer of the person, which we already know. After this first angry moment, the moment Do you remember? Up and down, up and down. Here is the same. So this dialogue Again happens next this we already know and this is very strange 
that it appears here. Because it's not part A, it's part B. But this melody we know, because this melody was, do you remember diminished chord melody? It's exactly the same melody. So, suffering melody again. But in part A, the suffering melody ended smoothly and brought us back to the beginning of the piece. Now something very strange happens. The suffering melody ends with this motif of anger which ended the love melody. And this is, you know, I don't know if Chopin was on drugs when he composed this music, because that's, that's how it seems. I mean, of course, my, I, I'm joking, but not fully. Because the, how could he do these things as a composer? First of all, put this melody... Well, the putting the melody from part A to part B is nothing really very special, because he did that before in Opus 9, number 3. Uh, but to, to make the melody the second melody of part A, the diminished chord melody, to end this with one bar from the first melody of part A. This is crazy, simply crazy. But it works, and that's why I think it has an inner message. Not only me, many musicologists think so. They try to guess this message, this story, but nobody really managed to do so, because Chopin didn't say a word about it to anybody. That's how Chopin was. Maybe good. Uh, so this diminished chord melody ends with something that before ended the love theme. And now we have something else, which is absolutely beautiful. It should be, right? But we have what? I call it a freedom moment, or a moment to release all the bad things inside us, to put it away. Listen. I'm sorry. left hand. Like some, you know, drums. But 
timpani, maybe timpani, you know, this. But anyway, here is something that provoked questions among musicologists and among all of us. What the hell is going on at the end of this nocturna? First just listen, then we will analyze and we try to answer this question. Like an opera, something definitely happened. Okay, let's go deeper into it. First we hear... Statements, questions, dramatic anger, but what it really is? Do you remember the dialogue between before? And now the answer. Ta -ta 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 -ta. And here? Yes, this is the same person. The same angry person or the same angry symbol. Now here really very angry. There is a kind of fight, quarrel, something bad happened. You saw it's like BAM in the table. Let's mind you that it's the year 1837 so you know Chopin couldn't write this bam, bam, like he could write in the 20th century. But this is almost like this, almost. I think we should consider that as a kind of this banging piano with the fists. And then we have the answer. Listen, be careful. Up, down. Yes, this is exactly the same thing. Do you remember? Unbelievable! When I discovered this, I had goosebumps. This was unbelievable. So this is like a collapse of the relationship, the love relationship that Chopin had. Again, two times. Bam! Bam! chords suffering and at the end the end unfortunately brings no hope it's not like we had in this Shakespearean nocturna in G minor when the minor ends in major we have the opposite here the B major love key B major nocturne ends in minor so no hope, you know, no hope, like in the Divine Comedy, you know, <laughs> lose the hope, leave the hope who enter <laughs> this world. In my opinion, with these two chords, Chopin ended inside himself ended already 
his the relationship but also his hopes and dreams um, about having a family and this nocturne this nocturne is a witness of what was really going on inside him it's it's a surprise also for me i must say because i never considered this nocturne before like like this before the deeper analysis um very complicated so i do understand it's complicated so now i have an, an idea to play it through for you and while playing just i will just mention where actually we are so that we can really catch all the story let's start sorry did you also feel the same that i did after the ending of this piece when i started the beginning it seems like another world it's so shockingly different unbelievable i think only when we connect the ending with the beginning then we can really uh, really understand this is something that we never got to hear on the concerts so these videos are for that so that's why i just stopped because i wanted to share with you my uh, spontaneous uh, feeling okay now let's start again without interruption <laughs> song and now we have the diminished chord melody that ends smoothly and we have the beginning again First, like from Nocturno Opus 27, number 2, with the beautiful couple, and then a fight. so beautiful but now and the dialogue answer 
first person, second person. Diminished chord melody full of suffering. Yes, very personal, very emotional piece, uh, which on the surface seems not as fantastic as the previous Nocturnes. But when we go deeper, we discover this beauty with a deep understanding. And I hope now this Nocturne is the different piece of music for you than before this video. If so, please write down, drop me a comment. Um, I would love to hear from you. What do you think about it? Thanks a lot for watching and let's meet again in the second Nocturne. And let's see what Chopin wrote after um, ending with this relationship, let's say. Thanks. Bye bye.